Welcome back to the Slay Sum, where I count up the unfortunate victims of Jokers and others' nightly escapades. In today's video, we finally come to the end of this stupid idea as I'm looking at the finale to the Arkham Saga, Batman Arkham Knight, released in 2015. Arkham Knight is probably the most divisive game nowadays, with just about everyone placing it either on top or on bottom of their ranking list, with rarely any in between. Well, it's certainly going to be my least favorite for this video series! Because Arkham Knight has only one word needed for its description. Big. Big open world, big sub areas, big side quests, big everything. And I have to comb through it all for some bodies used as an excuse for background decorations that just about everyone has always overlooked. No, I'm not mad, I'm just about to have an aneurysm because of the damn airships for the second time in Protocol 10 2.0, don't mind me! <sighs> I'm just gonna say this now to clear it up. This is going to be the messiest slay sum by a landslide. The simple fact of the matter is that we have an unreliable narrator for 80% of this game, and the whole gimmick of this game is hallucinations. There is technically no way to ever know if a body we're seeing is actually real, which will be a big running theme the further we get into this game. Frankly, you could ask anyone else to do this video and they'll probably get a widely different count than me. It is genuinely impossible to get an accurate count for this game because of how it plays out. So honestly, just bear with me as much as you can. It only made my job harder and the video potentially more entertaining. Regardless of how much pain I end up in, let's get to the final sum. The game starts with a cremation. If you somehow still thought Joker was alive after Arkham City, this game makes sure to put your thoughts to rest, as we literally start the game by burning his corpse in an incinerator. After that and some background narration from Gordon, we take the role of Officer Owens getting some dinner at Polly's Diner. After placing his order, someone comes to complain about a smoker in the corner of the diner. Being the good officer we are, we obviously go have a word with the guy. Excuse me, sir. There's no smoking in here. And now we get to the worst part of my job. Hypothetical kills. See, the reason this series is actually possible in the Arkham franchise is because the player can't kill anyone, so there's no way to influence the count through player action. That is not the case anymore. Thanks to this opening sequence, the player is now in control of how many people are slain in this diner. And frankly, I have no idea how to approach this. All the demons go down in just one shot from the pistol, and Owens actually has a limited number of bullets in said pistol. So, theoretically, there's a limit to how many people you can shoot. However, the sequence will pretty much always end before you can use up all the bullets on the demons. Because there will always be one invincible demon that will leap onto you after a certain amount of time has passed. What makes this even more difficult is the fact that we see many of these diner patrons in the morgue of Elliot Memorial Hospital, regardless of how the player acts. So that would imply just about everyone in the diner died of the gas, or each other. But then we know Owens escaped because we see him in the GCPD after the fact, again regardless of how the player plays out this scene. So frankly, I'm just not going to do hypotheticals. I am not going to grind this segment out for hours of my life just to find the maximum number of people you can shoot before getting pounced on. I'm just not going to count anyone until we see some bodies in the morgue a little later. I am putting my foot down and saying that the canon outcome for this scene is that Owens didn't shoot anyone. If you feel like disagreeing, how about you try wasting 5 minutes resetting this stupid mission hundreds of times to find the highest number of kills. I have a life and very limited computer space, so I am not about to do something like that for a video that isn't a challenge. Instead, our first real slay comes after a bunch of monologues from Scarecrow and Gordon. We cut to the streets, hear a few clicks, and then... Holy crap, that is dark. This poor cop was just executed by Penguin and Two-Face in cold blood, the former laughing it off like some kind of joke. <laughs> Gotham's finest. Even with all the death and destruction in this series, this is still one of the darkest moments in all the games. Great way to finish that opening segment. This finally puts us in control of Batman and we can start the game proper. 
after following the bat signal for the first and only time in this franchise, we go to save a cop from some rioters and get the feature everyone was clamoring for for six whole years, the Batmobile. We hop in and start chasing a military vehicle through the streets of Gotham. As we do, however, they fire an RPG at a pursuing cop car, killing the driver and his partner inside. Thankfully, Batman can stop the car and interrogate the driver, which finally gives him a lead on Scarecrow. He heads to a penthouse in Chinatown, but sadly doesn't find the Mad Doctor. Only a mad botanist and some militia members. After beating up most of said militia members, the leader tries to use Ivy as a hostage, but ends up getting gassed in the chamber. He shoots around a bit, notably NOT AT THE GLASS, and then Ivy slams his head into it, presumably only knocking him out. His body disappears after this scene, so there's no way to confirm if this killed him or not. But considering how much worse these guys endure from Batman and Liv, I won't call this a slay. After that, we get some tank fights, lock up Ivy, and do a bunch of stuff to track Scarecrow. After acquiring a new suit, we can track him to Ace Chemicals, the first place Batman should have looked, honestly, regardless of Gordon having a team there. As we approach the main gate, we meet a new face in Batman's rogues gallery, the titular Arkham Knight. He has some tanks shoot at us and the cops, but there's nothing for me to count here, so let's head inside. We don't find much at first, but after scanning the area for the remaining workers, we end up finding a few of their corpses. Three of them were killed by Scarecrow's forces in the takeover, with only two left alive for Batman to save. Bastards. And after saving them, Batman can head inside the building to further pursue Scarecrow. And in the process, we find the remains of Gordon's strike team. Five cops gassed and killed by Scarecrow. But seriously, why would he make a team with only five men? That's not enough to stop a supervillain like Scarecrow. Come on, James, you know this by now. Regardless of the logistics, we make it to Scarecrow and slam him around a bit, but he ends up pulling his own Batman and escaping while we're not looking. Ace is now ready to blow, and Batman needs to do something to stop it. So he prepares some neutralizing agent to reduce the blast, even if it means he himself is still inside. Through a long, agonizing process, he's able to reduce the blast enough, but is ultimately exposed to Crane's toxin, leading to him seeing this. Me. <laughs> Batman dies only a few hours into gameplay, shot in the face by a somehow still living Joker. And that's how the game ends. That is how the Batman died. Bad jokes aside, this leads to a quick flashback sequence that really only reveals that Joker's blood did indeed infect some people, and they're now turning into him. But that plot point won't be important until later, so don't worry about it. Because now we've got a new problem. An annoying sidekick Joker that now constantly follows us around with tasteless jokes. He's stuck deep inside you. Oh, and Ace is still about to blow, so Batman needs to get the heck out of Dodge now. During the escape, I didn't see any bodies left behind, so I thought that all the militia escaped the blast. Unfortunately, a single line of dialogue later in the game debunked my theory. Looks like we got lucky being shipped out of Ace. It took some serious casualties back there. This implies that at least some of the soldiers we beat down back at Ace didn't make it out in time. And honestly, I don't know what to do here. Since we drive through Ace, we would be able to see if there were any people left behind in the blast, and we see none during the escape whatsoever meaning there's technically nothing for us to count. However, since I know how many people we fought throughout the entire Ace arc, I know how many people could have been left in Ace when it started to blow. This is ultimately a case of Wonder Tower versus Joker's Funhouse. If you remember back in the Arkham City Slay some, I counted the Tiger Guards in Wonder Tower as dead because there was no way to confirm a body and I highly doubted they would wake up and escape during the cutscene. However, I didn't count the thugs in Joker's Funhouse, because you wake up and can see there are no bodies in the area after the fact, implying they all made it out. So I don't really know what to do here. Do I take the soldier's line at face value, or just not count anything since I can't confirm anything? Well, because we have a line backing it up, I am going to count them. However, I'm only going to count the soldiers we took down inside Ace, not any of them around the main gates. I have a feeling they could get up and get out in time, or were rescued by friends, while the guys stuck inside were just really unlucky with their assigned position. 
So that means the two guys with the sentry gun, the eight gunmen in the central mixing chamber, and the 20 guys in the basic combat encounter, leaving us with a whopping 30 soldiers killed during the Ace Chemicals blast. After that we get a bit of a break as we do some stuff with Gordon. Follow him, take down some pursuing cars, destroy some drones, and take out a few gunmen on the clock tower before getting another hallucination sequence. Gordon now hates Batman, so it's time to track down Barbara. Nothing to count for a while, including the video from the CCTV footage. Yes, I scrubbed through all of it to confirm none of the riders killed anyone during the chaos. After a bit of tracing, we can finally head onto Miyagani Island, where we don't find anything for a decent bit. Before meeting Riddler and Catwoman, we can take a quick stop to the roof of Elliot Memorial to find an unfortunate helicopter crash, likely shot down as all the chaos began to unfold. There were three cops inside the chopper, and we see all of their bodies laying on the roof. After that, we meet Riddler and Catwoman, but they're ultimately irrelevant to the story. Who isn't irrelevant is the driver behind the wheel kidnapping Barbara. She hit him with pepper spray, causing him to veer off the road and crash. He wasn't wearing his seatbelt, so ended up flying off the windshield and dying on impact. This is an important lesson to wear your seatbelts, people. You don't want something like this to happen next time you're kidnapping someone. Also, keep them in the back instead of the passenger seat. Much less likely chance they'll be able to fight back. A little more story stuff and chasing the night leads to nothing else for me to count quite yet, so I won't bother talking about it. After that, I decided to take a break from main story stuff and start a side quest. Specifically, Shadow War. Yes, I'm including this DLC and not the others because it directly impacts the main game. If you disagree, too bad, it's my video. Moving on. We start the quest by investigating two ninjas' bodies, and getting a call back to Arkham City by following a blood trail. As we trek across the island to follow it, we end up finding someone got in the ninja's path. Although strangely, he isn't dead from the encounter, just unconscious. That's fine, I guess, as it ultimately pales in comparison to the absolute slaughter we're about to witness inside Elliot Memorial Hospital. If you thought Protocol 10 was bad, you'd be... Well, you'd be right, this is nowhere near as bad as that, but it's still pretty bad. Especially since this scene is really freaking gruesome. We start with the bodies of four hospital workers in the lobby. Not too bad so far, you might be saying, but then we head just a little bit deeper. After some elevator puzzles and breaking through a wall, we're presented with an absolute bloodbath, both figuratively and literally. Corpses of ninjas strewn about the hallways, with one barely clinging onto life in a pile of her friends. She says that the demon's head must never rise again, and then passes out. Behind her are two bodies of loyalists, while she collapses in a pile of three rebels. Though she ends up dying by the time we return to the hospital later, so I'll just put her on the count now. After that, we have eight more ninjas in this hallway of various factions, and then a terrible return from Arkham City, a body pile. And this one is worse than the others, because I can't get close enough to it to confirm anything. I believe there are four ninjas in this pile, as I counted their rib cages in detective mode from the other side of this window. I tried using a remote battering to count, but that just didn't work, so I'm going with this educated guess. This leads us into the morgue, where the ninja we've been chasing has finally succumbed to her wounds. So, on to the sum she goes. In addition to her are the diner patrons we've been woefully neglecting since the start. There are five on one wall and two on the other, leading to five innocents and two thugs respectively. Obviously, this is not how many people were actually in the diner, and again, we have pretty much no way of knowing how many people actually died in there. So, I'm just going off of what we can see, but also adding one more thug to the sum. The news report at the beginning notably zoomed in on this particular person on the camera feed. As I theorized back in the Arkham Iceberg, I believe this is the person that released the gas. Why else would the news zoom in on a potentially dead body on a public broadcast? And since we don't see his body in the morgue here, I feel confident adding it to the sum. Furthermore, I'm confident only including the people we see in the morgue because you can just barely hear the news report saying, of the handful of survivors. Among the handful of survivors. Meaning that more than just Owens made it out of the diner. And that about does it for Shadow War, as nothing else of note happens until we return to the hospital. Except now we have a new problem. The ending. And again, I don't really know what to do. There are two endings to Shadow War, both resulting in death. However, one may result in more deaths than the other. Choosing to save Raish will have rebels come in and hit the loyalists guarding him with kunais. 
Considering how deadly accurate these assassins would need to be, these loyalists should be dead. However, examining them in detective mode shows them as calm. Not even unconscious. It seems they didn't bother to change these ninjas' statuses during the fight, expecting nobody to be stupid enough to actually investigate them while fighting a horde of eight other ninjas. But I'm stubborn, so I did. So this means the Loyalist ending may or may not result in more deaths than the Rebel ending, meaning the number of slays in Arkham Knight could indeed be dependent on player input. I know I said I choose to disagree with detective mode at times, but because of how messy it would make things, I'm going to side with it here and assume these ninjas in particular lived. Sue me, I'm not making two separate counts depending on what ending you picked for freaking Shadow War. So rather than the number of slays being different, it's just who ends up in the ground. Either Nissa or Raish end up dead at the end of this mission. Okay, technically Raish doesn't die during the events of the game, but Batman ultimately sentenced him to death. Since there's absolutely no way for him to come back from this state, and Raish even talks to Batman like these are his final moments, I'll count it as a death just so the outcomes are ultimately equal. Detective. <sighs> Proud of you. As I try to head back to the main quest, I get jump scared by Man Bat and decide to start a little bit of his quest, namely going to his lab to find the body of Francine, killed when Kirk turned into Man Bat and started his rampage. Now we can get back to the main quest and go after Penguin. But there's nothing to talk about with chasing the truck or the inside of the weapons cache, so we can move on. Penguin sends us to Stag's airships, which are currently hovering over Founders Island. On the way there, we can find three corpses left behind by Zaz along the coast of the island. Alright, enough delaying, let's head inside the airship and count up this absolute bloodbath. In this starting room alone, the militia have already racked up 14 kills of the airship workers. And trust me, that number does not get much smaller in the following rooms. In the room with the Blade Brute, there are two more workers, which leads us to finding Mr. Stag. And he's gone. Some more tilting puzzles eventually leads us to finding five more bodies on the way to the Predator Room. Inside said Predator Room, we have another bloodbath. This one rather difficult to count because of all the enemies corrupting my vision. However, amongst all the monkeys and computers, I found 13 workers' bodies strewn about. Again, possible I missed some with all the hidden areas in this room, but I think I got them all. That's 34 workers slain on the first airship alone. We still got a whole nother ship to cover! Now we can scrub through the security footage to find Stag's fingerprints, again not adding anything to the sum because we don't see anyone explicitly killed in the footage, and head back to the main room to get to the second airship. Immediately upon crashing through the window, we see three workers in this lab. That's not all though, as we see one more in the hallway leading to the Predator room, and then seven more in the test chambers, all victims of fear toxin. Then we're back to counting bodies with tons of enemies confusing us in the next Predator room, yay! Again, it's hard to tell if I got everyone with double counting or missing some, but I'm fairly certain there are 28 bodies in this room. And actually, not all of them are victims of Scarecrow or the Militia. Some of them were actually Stag's test subjects, as it seems he was experimenting with cryogenics with many of them frozen for some reason. I think they're frozen anyway, they could just be suspended in water for all I know. Either way, that's a lot of people to add to the sum. That finally lets us confront Scarecrow, but he ends up gassing us again, leading to another hallucination sequence where Joker takes control. He nearly kills some militia members, then pushes Batman to fake execute Scarecrow, but there's nothing else to add to the sum. This means we finish the airships with a whopping 73 slays to add to the sum. All of them airship workers, no less. Bad day at the office is an understatement. Scarecrow has now escaped with the cloudburst, leaving Batman collapsed in the ruins of the airship. His gauntlet starts beeping, waking him up to hear some bad news from Alfred. Scarecrow is broadcasting across Gotham that Barbara is in danger, so Batman heads back to the Chinatown penthouse to rescue her. When he gets there, though, a gruesome scene awaits. Barbara is gassed and begins seeing her worst fears in front of her. This causes her to shoot at the glass and eventually... You won't get me. I won't let you get me. You will bring death to all who follow you. 
and once again we're left in a difficult situation. Do we count this as a death? I'm going to say yes. The way I see it, there absolutely must be a person in this cell. The reason being that whoever is in there shoots the glass. I will reiterate, the soldier in the cell with Ivy earlier does not shoot the glass. These bullet holes are shot by whoever is in this cell, and they remain even after completing the game and overcoming Joker, so they are very clearly real. Someone is in this cell, shoots at Batman, and then shoots themselves. We don't technically know what alignment this person has, but I'm going to assume it's a militia member, potentially even the one Ivy knocked out earlier. After taking some time to wipe Batman's teary eyes, we basically go from one airship to another as we enter Iron Heights to take on Beneath the Surface. And I can now safely say that I hate blimps with every fiber of my being! It's one thing that there's a lot of bodies here, but what makes it terrible is that they're randomly strung up and partially hidden in the cells, all having different alignments I need to figure out. We start with 14 bodies in this first room, only 3 guards and 11 inmates. After getting the rundown from this guard, we tell the situation to Nightwing, who says he found… half a guard. I'll go ahead and count this since we see nothing like it for the rest of this count, and I'd trust Nightwing's hearsay over Tiger and Joker any day. We then see two more prisoners dead in their cells, followed by the corpse of a guard being pulled underwater and probably eaten by Croc. On the way to get the warden, I found a couple of bodies barely visible floating in the water, one guard and one inmate. Then we beat up some inmates with Nightwing and find that one of them was killed before we even got here. Now we have to leave the airship to find some guards who parachuted to… less than safety. One of them was unfortunately killed on impact when his parachute got snagged on a crane. His buddy survived though, so we can head back and apprehend Croc. As we head down to pursue him, we find two more guards killed in this carnage. Thankfully nothing to count on the videotape, though I don't doubt some of those inmate test subjects were killed due to medical malpractice. Nothing definitive for me to count though, so we can take down Croc and the Warden and lock them up, giving us a grand total of 24 bodies all across beneath the surface, 15 inmates and 9 guards. Not nearly as many as stag ships, but still a considerable number to add to our sum. After locking up Croc, we can meet Ivy again and ask for her help. She begrudgingly agrees, and we drive her to the Botanical Gardens. But there's nothing to count, so we can basically go from one side quest to another as it's time to take on Two-Face Bandit. Because believe it or not, there are indeed bodies in these banks. Some security guards were apparently left to patrol the banks during all the chaos, and Two-Face's crew shot them dead while robbing. There's only one in the first bank in Chinatown, while there are four in the Dresher branch, and a whopping 13 in the large Kingston bank. As a side note, I needed to count all the ones in the Kingston branch while avoiding Two-Face and the Militia since it automatically takes you out of the bank after finishing the section. So that was fun. Then I went back to the main story for just a few minutes to get some hacking stuff, disable some sensor arrays, and eventually destroy a missile launcher without any bodies to count. So I went right back to side missions for a moment to take on the perfect crime. There are six victims of Professor Pig scattered across the islands, all in incredibly gruesome scenes. Yet, surprisingly, none to count in his lair. This thankfully ends side quests for now, and we can head to the movie studios for a… side quest to the main story. Wonderful. At least this eventually gives us some bodies to count. After getting the voice synthesizer and taking down some thugs, we must reclaim the Joker-infected people one rampant in the studios, starting with Christina Bell. We work with Robin to make our way to the haunted house set and find her resisting captivity by the thugs. She threatens them a bit, saying how we're going to end up knocking them out, and accidentally shoots one with her gun. He dies, and the rest of the thugs reconsider their life choices that led to them working for the insane clown posse. <laughs> well, that evens things up a little. After subduing Belle, we can head over to Albert King in the Wild West set, where he seems to be reliving his glory days, killing a bunch of thugs with his bare hands just because he can. Looks like he's already killed two thugs before we even get there, and a third being flung into the sign and dying on impact. Poor guys, they definitely didn't want that. Johnny Charisma thankfully adds nothing to the sum, and we can head back to Henry, taking down Harley in the process. This leads to reveal that Henry was evil the whole time, oh my god! He's already killed Bell and King, then shoots Charisma while holding us at gunpoint. 
Before shooting us himself, Batman's eyes start to turn green. Henry realizes that Batman is the truest form of Joker, so purifies the gene pool a little further and shoots himself. You're gonna be spectacular. Harley mourns some more, and Robin decides the best course of action is to lock us all up, so we lock him up instead, finally ending this sequence with only eight bodies being added to the sum. Now that all those Harley shenanigans are over, we can actually just do another side quest. Heading back to Miyagani, we see a vessel out in the Gotham Bay, marooned on an iceberg. Gliding over there reveals that the militia has already taken the ship over, and is trying to find the captain. After taking them all down, we can head below deck and find a bunch of bodies encased in ice. There are 8 outside the control room and 7 inside, totaling 15. All of them were killed by Mr. Freeze, who has lost Nora once again. Jeez, Victor really can't keep track of his wife for more than a day, can he? Nothing else to talk about for the rest of the quest, until the end when it's revealed that Nora has been thawed out. Freeze loses all of his equipment in the chaos and won't be able to freeze her again, let alone develop a cure in the short time she has left. So since there's basically no way Nora will survive after only a few passing days, I am going to put her on the sum. Again, it's a situation like Raish. She has absolutely no way of surviving and the story is basically saying she's almost certainly going to die, so I'm putting her on the sum. After that absolute tearjerker scene, we can head back to Ivy and take her back to the GCPD. Unfortunately, we don't even have time to leave the gardens before my worst nightmare comes true. Alfred has finally located the Cloudburst. It's on Perdition Bridge as we speak. And then... Welcome to the worst thing this series has ever seen since Protocol 10. No beating around the bush here. City of Fear is literally impossible to count. And I don't just mean that in a way where there's so many bodies stacked in one place that it's really difficult for me to count. I mean it is absolutely, no questions asked, impossible to count because of how it works. Firstly, you can't see anything over top the gas. Even in detective mode, you will see nothing while gliding over the city to go get stag. Secondly, when you get below the gas in the Batmobile, there is no way to count all the bodies because of one simple fact. There's no consistency. I begrudgingly started this sequence by examining as many bodies as I could see on the ground, of which there are so many. However, after just a few minutes of looking, I thought I had found all of them on Miyagani, so I headed to Bleak and Founders to find some more. I didn't find any on either of them. Then, when I headed back to Miyagani to see if I missed anything, most of the bodies I counted were gone. Replaced by Jokers. Now you could argue that I should just count all the Jokers as bodies, since they clearly replaced all the corpses on the ground. Well, here are the problems with that. One, we have no idea if these bodies are even dead to begin with. They could very well be unconscious for all we know, since we can't scan them in detective mode. Two, the Jokers activate the Batmobile's shock defenses implying either they're conscious thugs that are just standing around, or Batman is hallucinating so much to the point that even the Batmobile appears to be attacking fake Jokers. And three, the Jokers don't perfectly replace the corpses left behind. See here, there's a bunch of corpses in this street when I started City of Fear, then not nearly as many Jokers to replace them when I returned to Miyagani. Which could also mean that there are bodies on Bleak Island since there are Jokers there, but we'd have no idea of how many since Jokers don't accurately replace body numbers. All this to say, I give up. There is literally no way to know the state of these bodies, if the Jokers are supposed to be bodies or conscious thugs, or anything else for that matter because Batman is an unreliable narrator. We have absolutely no idea how much of this is real or what's in Batman's head since he exposed himself to the toxin. You could argue that these thugs here are probably dead since they're literally getting their heads bashed into concrete. 
But again, Batman does far worse to these guys so often that they could easily just be unconscious. If you think you can do it, be my freaking guest. But the way I see it, because of how this section works, it's just impossible for me to count it. And frankly, this also kind of checks out with the concept of fear gas anyway. Fear gas doesn't kill people, it just makes people afraid. The only way they die is if they kill each other or themselves. Scarecrow implies people are doing that, but we can't see it for ourselves, so there really is nothing for us to count. Don't worry all of you who like big numbers. This is not the last you'll see of these bodies. As we head off to find another plant for Ivy, we must trek into the abandoned subway system, where we find not a trace of life or death aside from a few drones. After clearing them out and freeing Ivy's plant, we fight some more drones and then go fight the Arkham Knight in one of the worst boss fights in the series. After doing so, he escapes and we head back to Ivy to finish her redemption arc. Ivy is slowly draining herself of life to clear out all the gas, and after one final push, she's able to purify Gotham. Unfortunately, at the cost of her own life. Nature. She at least passes peacefully, and pollen spreads all across Gotham in her memory. And then the game decides to bend me over sideways and ram it straight up my ass with the absolute worst counting game of my entire life! All those bodies I saw that turned into Joker, they're all back, and all of them are deceased! Everywhere you saw even a single Joker during City of Fear is now inhabited by dozens of bodies, multiple times more than even Protocol 10! Ahem. <clears throat> Just as an example, here's a simple overhead look at Grand Avenue. Seems like a lot of bodies, right? Trust me when I say that this is less than three fucking percent of all the bodies across Gotham right now! And you want to know the worst part? No, it's not all the bodies strewn about that I needed to not only find within every nook and cranny of this map, but also count after the fact. It's the fact that the rioters and tanks return to the streets and make it nearly impossible to distinguish corpses from vantage points. So you know what I had to do? I had to literally go down into the streets and run through the carnage with detective mode on, hoping I saw everybody I passed by, then grappling away and losing progress if a tank happened to show up. I died multiple times while trying to find all these bodies, and I still don't know if I've even found them all. With how big these maps are, and how many little nooks and crannies exist that I might have missed, it's entirely possible I missed some. But I did my best to look everywhere for every possible body location. Then while writing the script after the fact, I had to carefully skim through every section in Premiere and counted all these bodies, while marking where I found them on the map to make sure I didn't double count any. Honestly, I may have done more work for a video like the Arkham Iceberg, but at least I had fun while I was doing it. This was one of the most painful things I've ever had to do for a video. So please, just let me chill for one second. Liking and subscribing really helps the channel grow, and after all that I went through for this stupid 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 video, I would really appreciate if you all did it. Maybe even share it with some friends, just please make all this pain and suffering worth it. Alright, shilling over. Here are the numbers I got. Firstly, I can thankfully say that there were absolutely no corpses on Founders Island. This checks out since thugs don't tend to hang around there to begin with, so that at least cuts my investigation time by a third. One other thanks I can give is that there is no issue as far as alignment breakdown. All of these people in the streets are thugs. No cops, innocents, or militia to speak of. That made at least one aspect easy, but in the end it doesn't even matter because of just how many bodies are on the other two islands. Honestly, I have no way of breaking this down in a way that would flow better than just giving the totals for each island. I know there are sections to the island I could reference to tell you where everything is, but I really don't want to do that. It was hard enough to count all these up, I really don't have the energy to break them down by region. So, on Miyagani Island alone, we have an absolutely ludicrous, downright unheard of, 
344 corpses strewn about in the streets. Yes, you heard that right. 344 bodies on just Mihagani. For reference of how many I had to count, here's a few notable locations. There are 61 bodies in and around Grand Avenue. 68 around the grounds of Wayne Tower. 62 in random back alleys. And so many more, it's absolutely ridiculous. Here's my map to show you just how many places I looked and counted. That said, these were honestly not that difficult to count. The rioters hadn't started spawning in droves yet, and each location was pretty recognizable for me to mark on a map with ease. Bleak Island was not that. Almost all of the bodies on Bleak Island are in the back alleys of Chinatown, all of which look almost identical to one another. On top of that, they're absolutely flooded with rioters and tanks, so it's a little hard to count everything when constantly surrounded by enemies. Truth be told, I completely rushed searching Bleak Island, and it's entirely possible I missed some. I couldn't even tell where I was half the time while looking at a map of the damn island. Those back alleys are just too complicated to navigate. But I think I got at least a close to accurate number. On Bleak Island, we have an equally as monstrous 253 bodies. Not quite as many as Miyagani, but that's still an absolutely ludicrous number of background decorations half the players probably never even noticed. And here's the map with no real notable pileups except this absolute fuster cluck in Chinatown. I'll say this again, my numbers could be totally off. It's entirely possible that during my countings I missed some or even doubled up on counting some bodies because I have no idea what I'm doing. Half the back alleys of Bleak Island look exactly the same, so it's possible I counted one of them twice or not at all. But I did my best to map everything out and ensure I only counted them once, so please, please, please don't yell at me if I missed some. This took so much time and energy I did not have to expend, and I really just want to lie down for a bit. We can get back to counting when I wake up. Alright, let's get back to me hating everything. This means that City of Fear alone claimed an absolutely ludicrous, completely unheard of, 597 victims. Let me say that again. 597! Holy mother of fuck, Crane! Why did you do this to me? In case you need a sense of just how big this number is, let's put it into a few different perspectives, shall we? It is nearly six times the number of victims I counted in Protocol 10. It is more than double the number of victims we've already counted from the rest of the game. It is 31 more than all three of the previous sums combined. It is so astronomically high that this number is downright unheard of in kill count history, let alone slay some history. And this isn't even a game where the player contributes to the count. That is how absolutely nuts City of Fear is. With that absolutely horrible segment finally behind us, we can finally move on to a less horrible rest of the game. Because as it turns out, that's it. There are absolutely no more bodies for the entire rest of Arkham Knight. The Knight HQ is completely empty. Jason's fight has absolutely no one. Scarecrow dropping Barbara off the roof leads to nothing. The assault on the GCPD doesn't kill anyone surprisingly, at least nobody we can confirm. Scarecrow kidnapping Tim doesn't lead to anyone dying, nor does the entire finale sequence. Thank god all of this is in Batman's head because I am not about to count all these thugs joker guns down after what just happened in City of Fear. And that pretty much leads us to the ending, where Scarecrow is finally defeated and we can roll credits. I did all the side missions with corpses to count, so Gotham can honestly just stay in chaos for all I care. 
I did my due diligence and counted everything I could, so let's just get to the numbers so I can forget this series ever existed. 823 people were slain in Batman Arkham Knight, absolutely obliterating the record Arkham City placed before it by nearly four times. And even if you take the ridiculous City of Fear out of the equation, you're still left with a record-breaking 226 people slain. Three more than Arkham City! Well played, Arkham Knight. You won even without Scarecrow's crazy juice going everywhere. We had a breakdown of 132 guards to 691 goons, an over 5 to 1 ratio in favor of the criminals. Though again, that discrepancy is a lot lower if we were to take out City of Fear, leaving us with 132 guards to 94 goons, more in line with Asylum and Origins breakdowns. Platinum battering for Coolest Slay goes to the cop Penguin and Two-Face execute at the beginning of the game. It's honestly a really shocking way to start the game, even after the nightmare segment and jump scares you just endured. Sure, there have been multiple gun deaths in this series before, but... This one always stuck out at me because of how it was framed. Just the sound of a gun cocking and shooting off screen, and then a lifeless corpse falling to the ground. That is art, people. The only people left on the streets are the sort that enjoy the chaos. <laughs> Gotham's finest. Bad joke for Lamus Slay goes to all those fucking bodies I counted after City of Fear! I know I said I was never going to count background bodies, but fuck me if I'm not still mad about this. This is so much worse than anything else I've had to count that I have to give it the award for the worst bunch of slays in the entire franchise. Believe me, I like big numbers. I think I've made that incredibly clear. But what I really like are big numbers that I can actually count without having to literally place numbers on a freaking map! I hated every second of doing this, and I would never wish this torture on anybody. Fuck you, Scarecrow, and fuck the City of Fear. And thank god that is finally it, chaps. Thank you for watching. This video was absolute hell to make, and I regret ever starting this series with every fiber of my being. Do not ask me to do any of the DLC or Origins Blackgate, because I am not touching this miniseries again for a long, long, long time. With that said, do all the YouTube stuff, because I already need another nap. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later, chaps.